All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just to kind of reflect on what we talked about our first segment, we talked about our WWE Raw review. And our second segment, we kind of jumped off talking about our WWE NXT Spring Break-In Preview. And third segment, we talked about AEW Dynasty, a couple of championship changes, also a lot of retention. So very, very cool. Very, very awesome. What they're going to do with Swerve Strickland as the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. I'm excited. I can't wait to see it. going to be super dope. So um, next, we're going to talk about our WWE Draft top prospects. Obviously, you have the WWE Draft coming up this week in about three days. Three days? It starts Friday? It starts Friday? So, um, yeah, of course, it's, it happens during draft week for the NFL. Kind of like, you know, get the fans, you know, in that draft kind of mood you know what i mean because you still have the 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 second third you know yada got rounds of the nfl draft but then you also have the wwe draft so it should be pretty cool that's kind of you know, let's, let's look at some of these superstars that could potentially uh you know be drafted to either raw or smackdown or maybe you know maybe they might get drafted to wwe nxc it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a push but you know who knows? We'll see what's up. First, we have Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov, very, very, like I said before, very impressive, very dominant. He's a technical uh, wrestler, fundamentals kind of guy. Um, where I think he would be good. Honestly, I think um, since I believe Cody Rhodes is probably going to SmackDown. See, once again, I don't, I don't know who has the first pick. I'm assuming SmackDown does because it's starting on SmackDown. But um, honestly, I think Dragunov, he should be on Raw. I feel like he would be perfect on Monday Night Raw. Kind of that red, kind of like that blood. And like you see red when you're ready to fight. And, you know, I could see him potentially being like a Sami Zayn, you know, next competitor or something like that. So I think that's where he would, you know, fit pretty well. All right, next we have Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes has not declared himself for the draft just yet. But uh, I know they might keep him in NXT to kind of have a nice little, um, you know, uh, feud with his uh, old best friend, brother, tag team partner, uh, Trick Williams. But if he makes it onto the main roster, this is definitely someone who can just make an impact the moment he steps into the ring. Absolutely. hundred uh, percent. It'd be nice to kind of see him. Um, this is like a huge jump. But wouldn't it be pretty cool to see the A-lister? Not the A-lister. That's the miss. Um, basically, <laughs> Logan Paul. Logan Paul. It'd be cool to see Logan Paul kind of uh, fight Carmelo Hayes. Both of these guys are larger than life. Both of these guys are like, you know, those huge flashy kind of guys. You have your bodyguards. You have your sunglasses. You wear your suit and stuff like that. So I can definitely see Carmelo Hayes taking on um, Logan Paul for the United States Championship. So if I was SmackDown, if I had a chance to draft Carmelo Hayes, I would draft this man. Do it. Just make it like Nike. And just do it. Or throw yourself in the river and just go with the go, go with the flow. Go with the flow of the WWE draft. It wouldn't surprise me if um Trick Williams is like maybe he gets maybe he stays on NXT. Perhaps maybe he does. I, I think he will. Honestly, I think a thousand and ten percent he will. All right. Um yeah, uh, Carmelo, my man Carmelo Hayes. Obviously a huge, you know, he's he's really, really good. Very, very good. Next, we have the Bloodline. We have the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa. We also have Tamatanga. And then you have uh, Jacob Fatu. Just right around the corner, that's probably going to either debut. It's been speculated that he's going to debut tonight or on Friday Night SmackDown. Should be interesting. Should be awesome to see. Can't wait to see what happens here. Um, but ultimately, I think that they would probably wind up on Raw. I doubt on SmackDown because it, look like, it looks like Nick Aldis is ultimately very, very, very frustrated with the bloodline. And he just, um, you know, he wants to control his show. And I don't think he can do that very much with Solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga as, uh, you know, kind of the people there. So, well, not, you know, kind of like those guys that you can't really trust. Kind of like those guys that are going to take over your show and just like completely dominate. But um, I don't know. It could be... Um, could be something to look forward to or something you know interesting to talk about. So, you know, anyways. So um, it looks like technology is failing me once again. So uh hey, it looks like we're gonna have to freestyle. You guys are gonna have to look at my beautiful face once again. So <laughs> anyways, moving on. So um 
Next, we're gonna. Um, next, we have uh, Damian. We have Bailey. We have Bailey. Let's talk about Bailey. She's the WWE Women's t- uh, Champion. Obviously, I think that she's going to um, continue to hold the title for a pretty long time. I think she belongs on SmackDown. I really think that she belongs on SmackDown. Kind of like you know maintaining that Tiffany Stratton, uh, Naomi kind of like triple threat match that I hope that they're kind of buttering up for a backlash. So hey, it should be pretty cool. Uh, next, we have the Awesome Truth. Next, we have the Awesome Truth. I uh, I love the awesome truth once again, but I just feel like that they're not going to be the ones to kind of like, you know, make it pass anywhere else. Next, we have Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss, I've been anticipating for her to come back for a pretty, pretty long time. Yesterday, I thought it was going to be the right time, but it wasn't to no avail. Um, didn't know this, but um, WWE SmackDown is going to take place in Cleveland, Ohio, still Ohio. I know I'm putting a lot of emphasis around Ohio, 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 because because oh, it's like her home state. You know what I mean? So it would be, you know, be no surprise if she makes her, um, you know, debut then. Um, but, you know, should be, you know, should be pretty interesting to see what they do with Alexa Bliss when she comes back. All right. Next, we have uh, Bianca and Jade. Bianca and Jade. Honestly, this is kind of like a, if they come as like a tag team, this is like a sneaky, like first round pick right here. I would definitely, if I owned, if I was the general manager of Raw or SmackDown, obviously you would love seeing Cody Rhodes and then you have Damian Priest heating up. So I feel like you can't really, you know, you could lose by not getting Cody, but then again, you can make up for it having Jade and Belair and then drafting uh, Damian Priest next. So honestly, it would be pretty awesome to kind of see uh, <laughs> SmackDown keep Jade and Belair, but only time will tell. All right, next we have Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, he's the Intercontinental Champion. He's obviously the ultimate underdog. He's like the, you know, he's the David and Goliath story. He took down Gunther at WrestleMania 40 against all odds. But um, I don't, I think he, he looks to me, oh God, like he seems to me more on the Raw brand. I don't know. Whenever I think of Sami Zayn, I just think he looks better in red. He looks better on the red brand. So, um, honestly, I think he's going to do great for Monday Night Raw. He's going to continue to be there, kill it, put on great shows, and just overall be an amazing wrestler like Sami Zayn is. So, you know. Next, we have Natalia. Natalia has pretty much left, you know, pretty much left the taste in our mouth that she is going to WWE NXT. So, not really much to talk about there. All right, next, we have Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker, super, super impressive. <laughs> he's had a bunch of squash matches lately. But um, you see him on WWE NXT. He's ready to kind of be a player. I don't know if he belongs on Raw. Maybe sticking with the red with the whole Wolf Dial things. Maybe. But also, I don't know if Baron Corbin's going to join him with the Wolf Dogs tag team. If, if that's the case, that would light up the WWE tag team division like right away. But um, I could see Braun Breaker, you know, going to SmackDown. Or, you know, honestly, probably going to SmackDown. Next, you have Tiffany Stratton. I don't really think that she's going to go anywhere because uh, her feud with Bailey and Naomi at the moment. And um, honestly, she belongs. She belongs on SmackDown. She belongs on SmackDown. Cable television brought you know broadcast television on uh, uh, Fox Eleven. Huge brand, huge channel. You need um, you know you need someone like Tiffany Stratton to kind of you know stir the pot a little bit. She's such a good heel. She's playing the heels so well. Former WWE NXT Women's Champion is, uh, you know, putting the wrestling world on fire in terms of Raw or SmackDown, wherever she, you know, gets drafted to. I hope, uh, you know, they do right by her and, you know, have a nice little booking. But and, um, and next you have Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch recently won the WWE World Women's Champion. I love Becky. I think she, I think of the world for her, but she belongs on Raw. She belongs on Raw. She hasn't been on SmackDown for. God, she hasn't been on... Oh, no, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because she was on SmackDown when she led the charge at Survivor Series where Nia Jax, like, basically almost broke her nose, if not did break her nose. So, um, honestly, when it's surprised, Becky is one of those superstars where she would be great anywhere. Uh, so, you know, kind of flip-floppy, you know, kind of balanced beam here. You know, I don't know who to pick. Uh, but if I had to, Monday Night Raw. So, yeah, that's what I would pick. Um, like I said, we talked Damien Priest. Damien Priest, he, I think he belongs on Raw. He's the WWE World's Heavyweight Champion. 
Um, definitely this guy is heading toward a baby face. He's heading toward baby face. You had that thing going on where they were talking about him two days after WrestleMania, kind of, uh, you know, achieving his boyhood dream of going to, a, to the Bronx, his hometown and rooting for his favorite players, his favorite team, the New York Yankees. And he even asked Aaron judge if he could coin the phrase all rise for the judgment day. And, you know, Aaron judge was cool with it. Aaron judge, you know, obviously very, very impressive for all you baseball fans. If you know, you know, so, um, yeah, honestly, I think that's going to be pretty big for WWE to keep Damian Priest on Raw. Wouldn't surprise me. I doubt he'll go to SmackDown, uh, but, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Next, we have Damage Control. Damage Control, you still have Eel Sky still ready to fight Dakota Kai, and you also have the Kabuki Warriors. I ultimately think that they will not break them up. I think it would be kind of dumb if they do, but um, ultimately... I think wherever the Kabuki Warriors land, you'll see Bianca Belair and Jay land there too, because I feel like WWE is ready to, you know, make Jade and Bianca the new WWE World Women's Tag Team Champions. Or perhaps they try to fight each other. They can't get on the same page because sometimes, no matter how talented you are, you can put talent into a room together. The chemistry doesn't always develop. And maybe that creates a nice little ripple effect where we can see those two in the ring at the same time against each other. I think that would be pretty cool. But as of now, they're a tag team. They're going to go wherever the Kabuki Warriors... No, wherever... Yeah, Kabuki Warriors and Damage Control goes. So, um, you know, excited to see that. Next, we have 8-Town Down Under. 8-Town Down Under, like I said about the Awesome Truth. I believe the Awesome Truth will go to SmackDown. And I believe the 8-Town Down Under will go to Monday Night Raw. Just because you kind of have that... Um, you have the Grayson Waller effect. His nice, you know, his little show. And you kind of have these guys cutting promos. For that, for an organization or for a show or promotion to kind of have that under their, um, their belt, they need more time. And Monday Night Raw is a three-hour show. And I think that's perfect for, um, you know, A-Town down because, you know, A-Town clown. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but uh, they need time. They cut good promos. They're jerks. They're like in-your-face kind of jerks. And I think they belong on the red brand. So you can see them on Monday Night Raw. Uh, next, we have uh, Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez, I feel like, um, wouldn't get a title shot right away. Maybe she comes in because she does have uh, kind of beef with Becky from NXT. So maybe that could be like her first challenger. Uh, but um, honestly, in terms of storylines and in ter terms of like projections and like uh, future bookings, I think it would kind of make sense for her to go on Raw because, um, I don't like I said before, three-hour show. You have Monday Night Raw kind of being the backbone in terms of the women's, um, you know, women's division because they have more time. Uh, SmackDown, I think you only get like maybe one or two women's matches. Uh, most of the time it is two. Most of the time, you know, most of the time it is two. But um, honestly, Roxanne Perez, I think she belongs on Monday Night Raw. I think she would make a damage. She would make a, she would make a bang like real quick. You know what I mean? Next, we have Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, when she comes back, um, definitely belongs on Raw. You kind of have that brutality. You kind of have that red, which, you know, like I said before, I think Bailey's going to stay on SmackDown. I don't think they would take a, the future SummerSlam storyline of Rhea Ripley fighting um, Becky Lynch or whoever is going to be the WWE World Women's Champion at uh, SummerSlam. So, you know, should be interesting to see where they do with that. Next, we have CM Punk. CM Punk, this is going to be huge. And I did have speculation, and I remember talking about it in a prior podcast. It'd be super interesting, super cool to see him go down. Not down. See, it's like such a habit for me to say go down to NXT. It'd be interesting for me to see NXT draft him. Because he spent a lot of time in the locker room with these WWE NXT superstars already. He feels comfortable in NXT. Uh, they need somebody moving forward going to the CW. They need that star. Obviously, yes, you do have Trick Williams. But uh, besides Trick, especially if Carmelo Hayes leaves, Braun Breaker, Baron Corbin could uh, very much you know hurt the brand. So it'd be nice to see CM Punk go. And with CM Punk leaving, you also have Drew McIntyre. They will not separate these two. They went on. And even if they do, Drew McIntyre is going to invade the other show to attack CM Punk when he's, you know, good and ready to fight. So, uh, you know, Drew McIntyre, I don't really have a show for him. I just think he's going to go wherever CM Punk goes, you know, in that. So, um, uh, yeah, next, uh, next, last, but definitely not least, you have Cody Rhodes. I saved this guy for last because obviously he's kind of like the, the Caleb Williams of the WWE draft. 
you know, with great talent comes great responsibility. No, I'm just kidding. No, with great talent, you kind of see um, kind of like where these people are going to go. Like, uh, great. Caleb Williams has been determined to go to the Chicago Bears for like, like almost like four or five months now. Kind of like Cody Rhodes. I think he's destined to go on Friday Night SmackDown and kind of take over Roman's spot there on Fox 11, which kind of reminds me that um, they announced that Roman Reigns was indefinitely out of the WWE. So you will not be hearing Roman Reigns being drafted on Friday night or Monday night. The reason why they did that was ultimately like, to get the fans to realize like look roman reigns isn't going to be in this draft usually when roman comes back he comes on his own time which you know is right for roman reigns like you know what i mean like he's done enough for the company to kind of come back at his own time he deserves a long time off he's doing a passion project right now in hollywood he's testing out his acting skills so uh honestly i you know it's gonna be a great draft it's gonna be a great draft but we will not see roman reigns being drafted to either raw smackdown or nxt so you know you can put that to bed right now i know so sad so sad i can't wait to see the tribal chief come back uh, you know i love the tribal chief he's well he was one of my favorite wrestlers like when he became like heel for the longest time i was begging wrestling i was absolutely begging wrestling to make roman reigns a heel like one match like what if roman reigns like wins one match and like turns to the crowd and just flips them the bird like you know what i mean like it'd be absolutely shocking like uh and it would be make for great success which the bloodline storyline was very much so a very great success so yeah well that was my show hope you guys liked it thank you for tuning in to the gsmc wrestling lawyer podcast brought to you by the gsmc sports network please remember that your support means a lot to us peace love and positivity baby leave a positive review remember to you superman punch that like and subscribe button to um and love it leave a positive review comment talk we want to see we want to hear our fans we want to hear the voices. We want to hear what you guys want to want to hear. Like you guys are the audience. Ultimately, you're the you're the lifeblood of the bloodline of the uh, GSMC uh, Sports Podcasting Network. So, <laughs> we also invite you guys to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, slash X, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Like I said before, if I haven't made you a wrestling fan already. We have podcasts, podcasts, and more podcasts, especially sports. We have, um, you know, Jeremy and TJ on sports. We have Kenneth on football. We have um, Nelson on basketball. Basketball's heating up, obviously, the uh, M N NBA playoffs. Uh, so, yeah, don't be afraid to expand your horizons, your podcasting horizons, and, you know, be a part of something that's going to be absolutely phenomenal and great. So, yeah, don't miss out on the bloodline, bro. Uh, thank you once again, guys. Always beautiful to see you guys. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night. And uh, um, ultimately, have a phenomenal day.